Hello and welcome back. This is Candice from Candoodle, and as promised, I'm back with another Avery L. Peekaboo boat card, this time stepped up into a slimline card. So let's get started. So in addition to the Peekaboo boat stamp, we're also going to be using the Lawn Fawn large slimline with sliders for that background rectangle, and the Lawn Fawn scallop slimline with hearts landscape for that scalloped edge, as well as the slimline stitched hillside borders. So I'm starting off with a piece of 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock, and I'm just cutting it down to to seven inches and then I'm gonna go ahead and score at three and a half inches so this is gonna give me a slimline card that ends up being eight and a half by three and a half which is the same size as that um, largest rectangle that we're gonna use to mat this so off camera I did go ahead and cut two panels of the scalloped edges out of 110 pound cardstock and I'm just coming in on one of them and using some distress oxide in salty ocean to do a nice simple blend towards the bottom. I'm not being super careful because this is just for the ocean so only half of it is actually going to be used on the card. Once I'm done that, I'm going to quickly clean up my work surface which is silicone. I got this on Amazon and it is fantastic because it wipes up super easily. And then I'm going to add my usual distress spray. This is just water to add some variation to the ocean scene. And then I am going to heat set that before we go ahead and die cut it. So I'm just taking one of these stitched hillside borders that looks the most like it could be waves. And I'm going to run that through my die cut. The other half you could totally place behind to layer it, but I'm actually going to save it to use on another card. And then I'm going to come in and do the sky on the other panel that I had cut. So I don't often use yellow for my skies. I usually use tumbled glass, but I wanted to do something a bit more bright and cheerful. So I started by coming in with some squeezed lemonade to see how that would look because I am a little bit nervous because I haven't used these colors for the sky before. I did decide that I wanted to pump it up a little bit. So I added some mustard seed and then I came back in with the squeezed lemonade to kind of blend that out towards where the water is going to be until I was happy with it. And once I was, I moved on to the stamping. So I am taking that peekaboo boat set and I am going to stamp most of the things in the set. Uh, so I have the boat, the little inner tube, the whale and the shark and their little fins, as well as the little fish. So I think I actually got all of the stamps in here. And I'm just coming in with some Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam ink because we are going to be Copic coloring this. So moving on to the coloring for the hammerhead shark, this time I am using my warm grays, which as I said in my last video, I tend to go for the cool grays when it comes to Copics, but I'm actually really liking my neutral grays lately, but I knew I wanted to use the neutrals for the whale, so I wanted the hammerhead to be a little bit different, so I did use the warm grays on that, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am then coming in to do the inner tube, and I actually stuck with colors that my boyfriend then told me were um, for a lifeguarding dinghy, but you know what? I think it still works for an inner tube. Um, so I am just adding some neutral grays in the creases to give this some dimension so it doesn't look so flat, um, but it still gives the appearance of a white dinghy um, with some dimension. And then for my little whale, I... I knew whales are black, or they can be, the one that I was going for is, but I was super nervous to use colors that dark, so I ended up using my deepest N, uh, the neutral colors of Copics, and I was actually really happy with how it turned out. I was just very careful to blend out to lighter colors by the time I reached around the eye, so I didn't lose the cute little eye in the dark colors, um, and I think it turned out relatively well. And then I am coming in with my cool Copics uh, in the gray shade to do the boat. So it kind of looks like a white gray, but it still has some dimension to it. So that is a bit about the coloring. I'm also going to show you um, how I like to pick my Copic colors when I am coloring because some people have asked about that. I usually kind of just look at my color chart and see what colors I like and what I'm feeling today. I know some people color pluck, so they just pick colors randomly from their stash and make it work. I do do that to an extent, but I usually use um, my Copic chart to get kind of an idea, and then I pluck colors that I know will work together. Um, that's one of Kathy Rakusen's coloring tips. Um, she is one of the people that I learned to color from, and again, I'm not an expert. Um, I just usually go from lightest to darkest, darkest back out to lightest, and try and add shading and dimension where it makes sense. Um, I am trying to learn a bit more about light sources and things like that. Like for this boat, I knew that it was going to be darkest towards the front and the back because my light source is kind of 
facing head on, but I try not to get too caught up in that when I'm coloring because I don't want to take the joy out of coloring. So if you are worried about that, just go for it. So here is where I'm showing how I choose my colors. So I knew I wanted the water to match the um, water that we had already colored with our Distress Oxide inks. So I just kind of took that and I compared it to my color chart and I picked the color that was closest to it. And then I am gonna pick the color that is a shade deeper and a shade lighter um, to make that have some shadows and depth to it. And it's gonna give some variation, but it's still gonna end up nicely matching our water that we had already blended with the Distress Oxides. So I'm just going ahead and doing that. And then we are going to be done with the coloring and I am going to fussy cut these off screen. I didn't color the fins during this part because I wasn't sure where they were going to end up. Um, I think I stamped them like kind of backwards and upside down so I didn't want to add shading to the wrong parts and then when I went to glue them together I was like oh no that's not how I wanted this to go. Um, so I did leave them for now and then once I cut everything out and have an idea of where the fins are going to sit and go then I will color them at that point just so I get the shading right. Again this is me just being finicky um, but if you ever aren't sure you can do that if it's easier for you. And I almost forgot to color my little fish which I'm just doing here before we flip forward. So once I have fussy cut those out, I am coming in with my X-Acto knife just to cut a line in that inner tube so we can stick our little shark in there. And here is me deciding finally where my little fins are going to go. So I decided the whale was going to kind of have one of his fins hanging over the boat edge. Um, so I added shading to that. And then I set up my little hammerhead fins how I wanted them to and shaded them. Sorry that my camera is doing some very strange things with the exposure here. I'm not sure what was going on. Um, and once that is done, I am going to to lay them all out on my slimline and see how I want to arrange this card. I was getting a bit nervous I was gonna have to cut the whale's little spout of water off but I did find a way to make it all fit. Before I do anything else I'm gonna come in with that largest stitched panel and which I've cut out from some light blue cardstock and I'm just gonna glue that down to the card base before sticking on my waves to my background panel and then I'm gonna stick the panel down to the card base. And I apologize that there is some random stray hairs going in front of the camera right now. When I tell you my quarantine hair is deeply in need of a haircut, I this is evidence example number A. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Note to self, put on a headband next time I'm filming. My hair has gotten very unruly, but things are closed here again in Canada and we are being encouraged to stay home. So you know, I'm just I'm just making it work as I think a lot of us are as well. So once I'm happy with how things are arranged, I'm just coming in and gluing down my shark's fins to that little inner tube. And then I realized that I hadn't thought about where I was gonna put my sentiment. So I lined up the sentiment where I thought it wouldn't interfere with any of the stamped images. And then I transferred this over to my Misty. I did use one of my creative corners because after I've done all of this ink blending and glued everything down, I really don't wanna mess this up at this point. So I did make super sure that it was straight and it wasn't going to be crooked or anything like that. And I did stamp it down a couple times because I was stamping over Distress Oxide ink. It might take a couple more times um, just to ensure that it's nice and crisp and black. And then I am gluing down my panel to my card base and then I'm just going to glue down all of my other things. So I did find a way to make that whale not have to cut off his cute little spout of water and then I wanted this to look like the whale was pulling the little hammerhead shark in the tube behind the boat so I didn't have any like twine or jute I think it's called but I do have a ton of embroidery floss so I just took some black one and I pulled it through the slit in the tube and you're going to want to make sure you don't tie this too tight um, because if you do it'll want to pull to the back where there's less space um, so this is actually the second time I did it and it worked out properly this time and I I just did a little double knot and then cut off any of the excess and then I made sure I didn't cut off the other side until I knew how long it had to be um, so I got everything lined up and then I just squirted a little bit of glue under that and then I cut off uh, the excess and this is going to be sandwiched between when we glue our boat on to the card base um, so that'll give it some additional um, traction as well to make sure that it sticks and I know this art glitter glue holds really well so I wasn't too concerned about that. I did realize that I had forgotten to glue the shark to the actual tube so I just squirted some glue behind there and then I am popping up 
his head with some foam tape just because there's the additional wave layer that's not behind his head. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it's sat kind of evenly and then I'm just gluing the bottom with my regular art glitter glue and then I am sticking down that little fishy. And of course, knowing me, no card is complete without some little gems or something. So I am just sticking down some clear gems. These ones are from Little Things from Lucy's Cards. And that is the final card. I think it turned out super, super cute. And I think this would be great for a birthday. It's very happy and cheerful. I hope you enjoyed today's card. As always, I would love to hear from you down in the comments. And next week, I will be back with the last card in this series. And it is going to be an interactive one. So I hope you'll come back for that. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit subscribe. It really means a lot to me and helps my channel grow. And as always, you can find me over on Instagram at Candoodle Creations.